What's going on guys, Matt here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over how to open a TD Ameritrade brokerage account. I know there's been a lot of interest in this lately due to the market taking a huge hit and being down so much. There's a lot of people now thinking about investing and I think that now is a great time to invest. And TD Ameritrade is my favorite investing platform so I'm going to show you guys now how you can open an account in 2020. So first you're going to want to go to the TD Ameritrade website. From there you're going to want to go to the top right and hit open new account. Once you hit that, you'll be brought to this page where it'll ask you what kind of account you want to open. And there's a lot of different options here, but for most people, they're going to want to select individual brokerage account. If you are trying to create a retirement account, you could go with an IRA. You could uh, there's different retirement options. You could do a um, a 401k, or if you if you're trying to make a trust, or if you're Education savings. So if you're trying to save for your kid's education, there's a 529 college savings plan. All of these are great vehicles to use for investing, but I think today we're just going to go over the most common one, which would be an individual brokerage account, which if you just want to start investing in stocks, you don't necessarily know what you want to do with the money. You just want to, you just want to invest it in the market. And this is definitely going to be the one for you. So you're going to go ahead and hit open an individual account. And once you do that, you're going to be prompted to fill in some information. So at first you're going to have to put in contact information. So you're going to put in your first name. So I'm not going to put in accurate information because I already have an account. So I'm just going to put in some uh, random information here. Just fill in a, uh, a random address here. Let's go one, two, three. Uh, sure. Sure, that looks good. And now you just have to put in a phone number. So we're just going to put in a random phone number. We'll go with just type in some random numbers here. You're going to want to understand their privacy policy. I've already read this, but if you're new to this platform, you're going to want to read this. But for this example, I'm just going to hit, I've read the privacy statement and then you're going to want to continue to personal information. So from here, it's going to ask you to put in your date of birth. So again, I'm just going to put in uh, some random numbers here. Maybe a date that actually exists would be helpful. All right, and it's going to ask you, are you a U.S. citizen? So on stuff like this, you can't lie, guys. I assume most people watching this video are a U.S. citizen. But if you're not, you're going to have to fill in this information accurately because it's really important. And it's going to ask you to put in your social security number, which most people have one. Um, for this example, obviously, I'm going to be making one up. I'm not going to put my own out on the Internet. So we're just going to type in some random numbers here. And then for employment information, uh, employment status. So... Most of you, I'm sure, are probably employed. So you'd hit employed, and then from there, they'd ask you to put in your employer name, your occupation, the industry or occupation you're in, uh, the address, the, what, where, what state you work in. Um, for this example, we're just gonna we're just gonna go with retired, so it won't ask me any information about the employer. Um, and then, how do you plan to invest? What kind of investor are you? Um, are you going to invest in just stocks and bonds and all these options you see here just mainly or are you going to be investing in futures and forex um, so if you're just getting started most likely you won't be investing in futures or forex that's typically more of an advanced investor that be using those uh, asset types so for now we're just going to go with invest in and trade stocks options ETFs, bonds and or mutual funds so now we're going to continue go ahead and continue to financial information and so here you're asked about your income. So you're not going to lie here. You're, you're not going to want to lie here. You're going to want to tell the truth. So however much you're making. So for this example, we'll say between 50 and uh, 99,000. So your net worth is if you liquidated all of your assets, your, your house, your car, anything that you own, if you sold all of it, how much money would you actually have? So that's what your net worth is. So for this example, we'll just say, we'll say 100 to 249. And then your liquid net worth is I like to just use the example of how much money could you come up with within a week. So this is stuff that if you, it's not including selling your house, not including selling your car. It's basically, what kind of money you 
or how much money you have in your bank account, how much money you have under your mattress, wherever you have money. That's considered your liquid net worth. So source of funding, how are you going to deposit money into the brokerage account? So lots of different options here. Whether it's going to be from your wages, you're going to contribute, let's say, every two weeks when you get your paycheck. Or if you want to uh, move some investments from other accounts here. But I'm assuming if you're looking... I'm assuming if you're watching this video that you may not have invested any money up to this point. So you may just, uh, most likely you're going to want to move money from employment wages or from um, savings. So we'll go ahead and just say employment wages for this example. So yeah, so that was for your initial deposit, but from, uh, so that was for your initial deposit. Uh, but for ongoing deposits, where are you going to be getting your money from? Most likely, probably employment wages for most people. And then here it's going to ask you your affiliation. So are you or is your spouse or is any member of your immediate family living in the same household licensed by, employed by, or associated with a broker, dealer, firm? So most likely the answer to this is going to be no. Um, are you or is your spouse or any member of your immediate family a member of the board of directors or have a 10% shareholder or are a 10% shareholder in any publicly traded company. So chances are, if you own 10% of a publicly traded company, you're not watching this video right now. So I'm just gonna say, it's pretty safe to say that that would be a no. So where do you want your cash to be held? The money that you haven't invested in stocks or bonds or whatever uh, investment vehicle you're gonna use. Do you, want it to be an F do you want it to be in an FDIC insured account? Or do you want it to be just in the brokerage account? Um, most people are going to want to pick FDIC. Obviously, it says here it insures it up to 500000 per depositor. So that's probably your best option here. So continue to review this information. So I didn't select a net worth here. So we're going to say that's uh, actually a liquid net worth. We're going to say this. Okay, so employment wages. Yep. So we're going to continue here. So continue to review information. So now it's going to ask you to verify that everything you've said is correct. Uh, which all, obviously none of this is accurate because I just made up a person and all of their information. So from here you're going to want to continue. So it does not ver <laughs> that that's expected. So this obviously isn't a real person. So they're wondering what I'm doing. But from here, guys, you would um, you would just go on, you would read their, um, we'll see if I can get past this here. We'll say use the name I try, I entered, use the address I entered, submit. Okay, so now they just wanted to make sure that I had everything correct. So now it's on to the fine print as they say here. So you have all these documents here, the client agreement, account handbook, business continuity plan statement, TD Ameritrade privacy statement. So you're probably gonna to wanna to read all of these if you're a first time client at TD Ameritrade. But for me, I've already read most of these. And um, so we're not gonna read them for this example. So now it's just asking you to make sure that you agree that all of this uh, information is correct. Um, so I'm not gonna click this because this is not correct and this is not me, so I'm not gonna to lie to the IRS. But uh, when you're actually making an account, you're gonna uh, check all these boxes and you're gonna hit continue. But if I were to hit continue, all it would ask me, it would give me a user ID and it would have you make your password so they can set up your account. And that's basically it, guys. You got your account already set up. Uh, you're ready to deposit funds and start investing. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did learn something, I'd hope you consider subscribing to the channel. And if you could just drop a like down below, that would really help my channel. I'm a new channel, I'm trying to grow. I'll be uploading very frequently, so I hope you guys enjoy my content, and I will catch you in the next video.